Let's talk about graphs. A graph is a data structure made up of nodes, also known as vertices, and edges, which are the connections between those nodes. Think of it like a network, where each node represents an object or entity, and each edge represents the relationship or connection between them. The graph you are seeing is known as an undirected graph, where the connections between nodes have no direction. This means that if there is an edge between two nodes, you can move between them in both directions. A directed graph, on the other hand, is one where the edges have a direction. This means that the connections between nodes only allow movement in one specific direction, from one node to another. A graph can either be weighted or unweighted. The graph on the screen is an example of an unweighted graph, where there is no cost associated with moving from one node to another. A weighted graph, however, has a specific weight or cost assigned to each edge, representing the cost of moving between nodes. In this example, the weight of the edge between node A and node B is 3, meaning it will take 3 units of cost or effort to move from A to B. Another important concept is the degree of a node. The degree of a node refers to the number of edges connected to it. In an undirected graph, this is straightforward. The degree of a node is simply the number of edges connected to it. For example, the degree of this node G is 3 because it has 3 edges connected to it. In a directed graph, however, the degree is split into two parts, the in-degree and the out-degree. The in-degree represents the number of edges coming into the node, while the out-degree represents the number of edges going out from the node. Now, there are other types of graphs, like parallel graphs, where multiple edges can exist between two nodes, or graphs with self-loops, where an edge is directed back to the same node. However, we won't be covering those in this video. Next is the concept of connected graphs. A graph is called connected when every node is reachable from every other node. In a connected graph, there are no isolated nodes, and all nodes are part of a single connected component. In this example, the graph is not connected. To make it connected, we need to add edges between certain nodes so that every node can reach every other node. Let's now explore how many minimum edges are required to keep a graph connected in the undirected case. We'll start with one node. This is considered connected on its own. If we add a second node, we need to connect them with an edge. Now, if we add a third node, we need another edge, and so on. You can see the pattern. The minimum number of edges needed to keep a graph connected is always one less than the number of nodes. So, for a graph with n nodes, the minimum number of edges required is n minus 1. Now, what about the maximum number of edges? This happens when every node is connected to every other node. In the case of undirected graphs, the maximum number of edges is equal to the number of ways to choose two nodes out of n nodes, which is given by the formula n times n minus 1 divided by 2. What about the minimum number of edges in a directed graph to keep it connected? This is a bit tricky because the edges are unidirectional. So, when we connect the nodes like before, we can only reach nodes in one direction. In this case, the graph is considered weakly connected meaning the nodes are connected, but not every node is reachable from every other node. To make the graph strongly connected, we need to add a directed edge from the last node back to the start node, ensuring that every node is reachable. This forms a simple directed cycle, where each node has both an incoming and outgoing edge, ensuring strong connectivity. So, the minimum number of edges required in this case is n, now the maximum number of edges in this case means every node is connected to every other node. This would be twice the number of edges compared to the undirected case, because now there are two edges for each pair of nodes, one in each direction. Now, let's see how a graph is represented. First, let's look at the adjacency matrix. In an adjacency matrix, we use a two-dimensional grid where each cell represents whether there is an edge between two nodes. If there is an edge, we put a 1 in the corresponding cell, and if not, we put a 0. Each node has one row and one column in the matrix. Here, the rows represent the starting nodes, and the columns represent the destination nodes. For example, this cell represents whether there is an edge from node A to itself, which would be a self-loop. Since there is no self-loop here, we will mark this cell as 0. We'll do the same for all the diagonal elements, as they represent self-loops. Now, this cell represents whether there is an edge from node A to node B. Since there is an edge here, 
we will mark it with a 1. We will similarly fill all the cells based on the presence or absence of edges between nodes. Notice one thing carefully. In an undirected graph, going from one node to another is the same as returning from that node, so the matrix will be symmetrical. However, in a directed graph, an edge can only go in one direction, so we will fill the matrix accordingly, without symmetry. Just like before, all the diagonal elements will be zero because there are no self-loops. However, now, while filling the cells, we will check if there is a directed edge from the row node to the column node. If there is, we will mark it with a 1. Otherwise, it stays 0. Notice how the matrix is not symmetrical along the diagonal in a directed graph. This is because the edges have a specific direction, unlike in undirected graphs where the matrix is symmetrical. If the graph contains weights, we use a different symbol to represent the absence of an edge. In our case, let's use asterisk. Now to represent the edges, we simply replace the ones with the corresponding weights of those edges. Now this matrix is of n by n dimensions, where n is the number of nodes in the graph. So the space complexity of this representation is big O of n squared, which can be a bit expensive in terms of memory usage, now, to find all the neighboring nodes of a given node, let's say node B, we need to traverse that row of the matrix. This operation takes linear time, meaning the time complexity will be big O of n. Now, adding an edge is a constant time operation since it only requires updating the target cell in the matrix. This means the time complexity for adding an edge is big O of 1. Similarly, removing an edge is also a constant time operation, as it only requires updating the corresponding cell in the matrix. Now, removing a vertex is a bit trickier. Let's say we want to remove vertex B. To represent this in the matrix, we have to remove both the row and column corresponding to that vertex. To do this, we need to create a new matrix with one less dimension and copy all the elements except for the ones related to the vertex we are deleting. This new matrix then becomes the updated adjacency matrix for the graph. Removing nodes takes big O of n squared time complexity because we need to copy the elements from one matrix to another, which involves updating both rows and columns. Now, adding a vertex is exactly the opposite of removing one. We create a new matrix with one extra dimension, copy all the elements from the old matrix to the new one, and add the new row and column for the vertex. This operation also takes O of n squared time complexity because we need to copy all the elements from the original matrix into the new one. This operation can be optimized if we start with a larger matrix initially, but that would waste a lot of space since unused rows and columns would remain empty. Another way to represent a graph is by using an adjacency list. In an adjacency list, each node is associated with a list that contains all the nodes it's directly connected to. For example, the node A here is only connected to node B so we will only store B in the adjacency list of A. This way, we only store the nodes that A is directly connected to, making the representation more efficient. Similarly, the adjacency list for the other nodes will be created, with each node only storing its direct connections. In the case of a directed graph, each adjacency list will only store the edges that are going out from the node. This means we only keep track of the nodes that can be reached directly from the current node. Now, if the graph is weighted, we simply pair each edge in the adjacency list with its corresponding weight. This way, each connection not only shows the destination node, but also the cost or weight associated with that edge. The space complexity for an adjacency list is big O of n plus e, because for each node, we only store its direct connections. We need space for each node, which is big O of n, and for each edge, we store it in the list of the node it's connected to. In an undirected graph, each edge is stored twice, while in a directed graph, each edge is stored once. This means the total space required depends on both the number of nodes and the actual number of edges. However, when the graph is dense, the number of edges tends to approach the square of the number of nodes. In that case, the space complexity of the adjacency list also becomes close to big O of n squared. 
Now, adding an edge is a constant time operation because we only need to append that edge to the adjacency list of the node. If it's a directed graph, like this one, we append it once to the starting node's list. In the case of an undirected graph, we need to append the edge to both connected nodes' lists. Now, removing an edge requires searching for that particular edge in the adjacency list of the node. The number of edges present in the list will be equal to the out degree of that node, which means the time complexity for removing an edge is proportional to the out degree of the node. In the case of an undirected graph, removing an edge means we need to search for the target edge in the adjacency lists of both connected nodes. In this case, we need to search the list of both nodes B and D. So, the time complexity in this case would be proportional to the sum of the degrees of both nodes involved in the edge. Now, removing a node is a bit tricky. Let's say we remove node B. The first step is to delete the adjacency list of this node, which is a constant time operation. Then, we also need to remove all references to this node from the adjacency lists of all other connected nodes. In the case of an undirected graph, these references can be easily found in the adjacency list of the deleted node. However, in a directed graph, we may need to search all adjacency lists to find any references to the node, which can potentially take big O of n plus e time in the worst case. Now, adding a node is a constant time operation because it only involves creating an empty adjacency list for the new node without affecting the other nodes or edges. So, that was pretty much the introduction to the graph data structure. In the next few videos, we will dive into traversal algorithms like breadth first search and depth first search, minimum spanning tree algorithms like Prims and Kruskal's, and shortest path algorithms like Dijkstra's, along with others.